All right, so today's adventure, um, I actually got started a little bit on this, cutting out through the tedious stuff. Also because I forgot the camera. I came out by myself without stuff. And when it's just me, I forget a bunch of stuff apparently. So I didn't bring the camera up the first time I started tearing into this. Uh, so I'm just gonna jump forward. But what we're dealing with is we have a week until we're gonna launch into the water and, and move the boat closer to home to another boat yard while we're waiting for a slip to open up. And, you know, just got the injectors hooked up in the last video um, and got them installed. Everything went good, it ran awesome. And so been periodically test firing, just, you know, running through cycles and everything. Uh, so last weekend I came in, went to fire it up, check my fluids and my coolant reservoir was like an inch low i think it was the time before last and so i topped it off and i just did a coolant flush and everything so i thought maybe it was low come back last weekend it was low again about an inch so i'm checking leaks thinking i had all these hoses off maybe you know they're leaking no leaks so nothing in the bilge it was like well it's it's somewhere and so i pulled the dipstick and oil's milky so my coolant's getting into my oil pan. So, and I'll show you what I got. So this here came out of the bottom of my oil pan. I use red coolant, obviously. So that is pure coolant was sitting at the bottom of my oil pan. So what that means is you got your coolant and oils mixing generally means head gasket. Okay, so my assumption was first, you know check everything out but it's running so good so check everything out I'm thinking it's head gasket so I jump in tear the head off head gasket looks good so this engine is actually a wet sleeve style engine meaning you can rebuild it in place you can actually pull the bores the cylinder bores that the pistons ride in you can actually remove them replace them with new bores new pistons everything so you can rebuild this thing essentially right in place where a traditional motor you score the sleeves too bad, the block's junk, and you throw it away and you buy a new block. So this, it's cool that this one is rebuildable pretty much at, at any, whatever you do to it. But the problem with that is when the cylinder sleeves, the replaceable ones are put in, they have O-rings on them to separate oil from water. So when I bought this boat, it was surveyed, sea trialed, but when we bought it, the coolant system was empty and there was a small leak. Well, last weekend, or the weekend before last, whatever, when I fired it up, that was the first time I fixed the little leak that had been dripping Why the reservoir was empty. So I pressurized the system and I think that was enough to blow the O-rings out. Long story short, to replace the wet sleeves, head comes off, which I thought was the worst of my job. I actually have to pull the pistons out and pull the liners out, replace these little O-rings. They're not very expensive. I think it's about hundred bucks on them. Place the O-rings, but essentially you gotta tear the whole motor apart to get to these little O-rings. So, Anyway, so I got I got the head gasket out or sorry. I got the head off I got all the little easy stuff that generally is just time take it off. So I skipped all that um, And I'm just gonna kind of go through today showing What what has to happen to pull these sleeves out? So uh, none of this is a fun job Most I think a lot of people would roll the engine on its side. I don't want to disconnect my tranny and do any of that so i'm doing it all in place which might be the hard way i don't know um this engine weighs a thousand pounds so minus the head it's still pretty heavy uh so i think i think this is better leaving it in place but uh, that's just me so i'll show you what we got i've got parts littered all over head over here yeah so it's a pretty fun process so this is what i got so far so we'll be down to the pistons. You can see here, I'm gonna push the pistons up and right here, it's really hard to see in this video, right here is the lip. And this is a machinable cylinder that comes out. This is usually part of the block in automotive rigs and more modern engines basically. But the old school ones, these were all, these popped out. So generally I was pretty happy that I, these were wet sleeve liner motors, but until this happened, I have mixed feelings now, so. <laughs> So anyways, only good thing is I'm gonna do bottom end bearings in this thing, regasket everything, 
It honestly looks great on the inside, so I don't really need to, but I'm gonna get everything cleaned up while I'm in here, so at least I know I got a good engine when, when we're underway. So anyways, here we go. I'm gonna show you what it takes. I already pulled the main caps out on the connecting rods. And so the reason I did that is because they are down here. So obviously not gonna see much. Just see me grunting and crying basically, trying to get to those. Um, so now I got those off ahead of time, so now I'm gonna pop the pistons and uh, pull those liners out. All right, so, oh. so like I said previously, these are loose. So what you wanna do is just push up. seal good okay so carefully pull up what you don't want to do smack that cylinder wall down carbon buildup is a little heavier than I thought so what I ended up doing is I just cleaned it up with some scotch right just a little bit you obviously don't want to get crazy in the cylinder and I just put a little bit of oil on it so I was just being lazy and thought I could pop it right out but it was wrong Phase one's done. Pull the pistons out, and now to pull the liners themselves out. And again, this is a good time. I mean, this is a pretty uncommon thing I think anyone will deal with, but I'm just that lucky. Um, but if you do, I strongly suggest take the time to. If you see anything questionable? Do it now. While you while you have to be in here. So what I did is I made this liner puller. Um, obviously this is the only diesel I have that has liners in it. So um, looked up buying one. Not only is it, if I do buy one, it's probably a week out. It's almost New Year's here. So I mean, all the mailing's messed up. It's gonna take forever. And these little pullers are like five to 700 bucks. Um, I have a commercial account, even on my commercial account, I wasn't getting much on there. So I just can't justify that. Anyone knows me, I'll spend money when I need to, but that's not somewhere I'm going to. Uh, so I fabbed up this little guy here. Hopefully it works, I haven't tested it. So I'm pretty proud of it so far, but we'll see if it works, if I end up being proud or checking over the side. Um, so I basically, mind you, I also made this. I thought I was gonna buy one. So I made this at home, not specking this. So I just looked up the bore size and I cut a little inlet here, the inner side, 
to just under that bore size and then the outer to the thickness of the sleeve or I should say the assumed thickness because I haven't wasn't here to measure it and I still have pistons in it the goal is to grab the bottom of the sleeve here and this straddles the block and the liner should in theory come up through here I say in theory because we're gonna find out if this was worth it or not so if it doesn't work I can honestly modify it to to what I need to work. I'll just have to go home and do some stuff. But um, I use scrap metal and about 10 bucks worth of all thread. See how round two comes out? Thank God this is not a V8. I only have four of these to do, so that's two. There we go. Don't get in a rush. So you can see here, this is the liner here. Obviously it's pretty crappy looking. Um, that's from, this is where the coolant goes around. All right, so this is the finished product. You can see down here, sort of, it's too dark I guess, but the liners go in here and then this is where the coolant sits and rides. And if it, that second area down there, crap, you can't see. Anyways. It goes past that second O-ring, goes right to your old pan. So that was the issue I ended up having. All the O-rings kind of felt because of plastic. So although the hours are decent on this engine, uh, I just think time and leaving it dry was the killer here. So in a nutshell, uh, parts are on the way. Should be any day now once I get those. I got a lot of cleaning to do. Obviously, deck looks nasty. All the parts are laid out all over the freaking place so while it's out i'm going to clean everything up make sure everything looks good if there's anything i gotta replace i'm going to do it now um when parts come then uh i'll do another video of me putting it together firing off bring it to temp obviously showing that everything's good but i think at this point i mean i'm basically doing all new gaskets everywhere um so i think my water leak will be fixed after this it definitely seems like the o-rings were it um it was quite a bear to get those old ones out but in the end it is what it is can't have coolant in there so hopefully we'll get i'll get this back together i'm hoping next weekend so we're going to probably push our launch date out a week maybe two um either way should be in the water still pretty soon hopefully the engine just purge along and we have no issue because we're probably end up motoring most of the way to the next yard and so we're trying to basically bring it closer to us about an hour and a half drive now uh, we're trying to bring it to Everett and it'll be about 20 minutes away from us at least until our spot opens because that's what we're waiting on now um, so yeah we're just trying to get this together put it in the water run it down closer and then it's coming back out of the water so anyways uh, I got a lot of cleaning to do um, and then I will post another video when we got this thing going back together all right thanks <laughs>